Good morning. Today is the 23rd day of Shvat, the 2nd of February, and we are up to the 6th reading uh, of Parshat Yitro. The 6th reading has the Ten Commandments in it, as they're known, the Ten Commandments. We've talked about this in the past, whether there are Ten Commandments really here, or maybe 11, or maybe 9, oh, the different reckonings of how many commandments there actually are, and we said that in Hebrew it's not called the Ten Commandments, it's called the Ten Sayings, or the Ten uh, uh, Words, Aseret Advarim. In any case, we've spoken in the past about the introductory verse, Exodus 21. Um, God spoke all these things, saying, and we spoke about why the name of God here is Elohim, the uh, lower name of God as opposed to Havaya, the Tetragrammaton, which it would should have been, because then, then it says right away, I am Havaya, your God, who is taking you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of uh, bondage. We've also spoken about, I think in the beginning of the week, or last week, or two weeks ago, about how this changes God from being the God of only creation to being also the God who is the commander. And today, uh, we'd like to focus, I want to focus on a small uh, point, which is actually very interesting, about the way that the Ten Commandments are read and the way that they are written. As it turns out, they're read a little bit differently than how they're written. This is not a major point, but you'll see how even small things make can make a very big difference. The question is, how to divide uh, these ten, again, commandments really is, is the wrong word, but these ten sayings that God said, and that all the Israelites participated in this prophecy of Moses, how to divide them into ten sayings? How to exactly do they divide into ten? So the, the way that people usually divide them is the way that they uh, appear in the, in the, in the Bibles or the, the chumashim that we, that we have. So how does it divide here? We, we tend to divide them by verses. So we go by verses. So the first commandment is, I am Havaya your God, who took you out of the house of, who took you out of Egypt. Second one is, verse 3, there will be no other, you shall have no other gods upon me. In the f- um, f- and, and then there's, there's a little bit of a problem, because the verses are now, there's not exactly ten verses. If you go through everything, you see that in terms of verses, it's divided altogether into 14 verses. Um, so th- uh, that presents something of a problem. Uh, th- uh, Thirteen verses. So that presents something of a problem. So what do we do next? So the usual way that this is done is that you should not have no other gods upon me. And f- verses four, five, and six are connected to that. It's describing who God is. And then it says in verse seven, the fourth commandment. Uh, sorry, the third commandment. You should not take my name in vain. And then the fourth commandment, remember the day of Shabbos. And, and this again takes a few verses, 8, 9, and 10. And then, uh, and 11, sorry. And then the fifth commandment, 12, verse 12, honor your father and your mother. And then we have in one verse, verse 13, we have four commandments, or so it seems. You shall not murder, you should not commit adultery, you should not steal, and you should not bear false witness. And then we have another verse, verse 14, which, again, it's a question of how to, how to see it, so perhaps it contains two commandments. You shall not be envious or covet the house of your fellow, nor, his, uh, nor shall you covet your fellow's wife and his possessions. <coughs> so it's not so simple even to divide it into ten. So the way it's divided is that we don't use the verses. The verses don't help us divide it. What helps us divide it is what we call a paragraph mark. The paragraph marks are in a Torah scroll. If you look inside the Torah scroll, I don't have an example here. Um, I thought I should have prepared one. But, okay, I sort of have one. And I think I've shown you this before, but in a Torah scroll, the way that this will show up is that 
there are paragraph marks, and there is open paragraphs like this, where the paragraph is open all the way to the end of the line. And there are closed paragraphs, but there's still a paragraph. This is called a paragraph because we have this space in the middle. And so these are all closed, and this one is open. So if we, these are the Ten Commandments here. So if we look at it, so here's the first paragraph, second paragraph, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. So if you go by the paragraph marks, we're fine. We have ten altogether, and that's where it comes from. And the idea of the paragraph marks, which are called simane parshiot, is that they do mark a break in the prophecy, meaning that there was one prophecy, it ended, and another one started afterwards. But, like I said, the paragraph marks are different in the Torah scroll than they are in the Chumash. And the reason for this is, is that we have two different traditions about how the paragraph marks are. Now we're going to focus on what we want to talk about. The way that it is in the Chumash, the way that it is in the printed uh, versions of the Torah, is that the first two commandments, I am Havaya your God, and you shall not have any gods over me, which consists, consists of verses 3, 4, 5, 6, and, seven, uh, and 6, is one whole paragraph. And so that is considered the first commandment, actually. But nobody counts it that way. Because we count it according to the way it's broken up in the Torah scroll. In the Torah scroll, it's actually divided differently. That after the first verse, verse 2, here it's, again, Exodus 20, verse 2, is a paragraph mark. In our... Chumash, in our printed version, they, they couldn't do this because there is no paragraph mark. There is, a, there is an actual official paragraph mark, which is the letter Samich or the letter Pei. These are the two paragraph marks. They're either Samich means a closed paragraph and Pei means an open paragraph. But if you look after the first verse, there's an open paragraph but no mark. There's no Samich or Pei. It should have been a Pei here. But there isn't. What do they do? That what they usually do is they show you how it's divided in the Torah scroll, but they don't write that it's a paragraph, because it really isn't. Only in the Torah scroll does it show up as an open paragraph after the first verse, after 22. After Exodus 22, I am Havaya your God, who took you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Only in the Torah scroll will you see physically that it's open, the paragraph is open. So it's the fr that's the first commandment. The second commandment is, you shall have no gods over me. And then, at the end, at the very end, the last two commandments in our books are joined together. There is no, even though in our book, the one I have here, it says a samach, it says there's a paragraph here between you shall not covet uh, the house of your fellow and you shall not covet your fellow's wife. Here I have a samach, but in the Torah scroll there is none. And that's how they try to mark it here, that there's no real separation, although they should have made it even closer. So let's recap here. W there are ten paragraphs. The question is about the first and last one. In the Torah scroll, the first and second commandments are divided by an open paragraph. In the Torah scroll, the last two, what we have in our books as paragraphs, you shall not covet and you shall not covet, are actually one paragraph. And so that's how this changes. In the, uh, uh, so actually, these are two different traditions about how the Ten Commandments are. Is the Ten Commandments, when we enumerate them, one and two, I am a vayar your God, and you shall not have o any gods over me, that's one and two, or is that all one, and you shall not covet, and you shall not covet, are nine and ten. Those are the two options. In the beginning or at the end, are they joined or separate. If you join the beginning, you separate the end. If you separate the beginning, you have to join the last two and make them into one, so that altogether you have ten paragraphs. Now, what's the whole idea here? The idea is that the Ten Commandments obviously correspond to the Ten Sfirot. The first Sfira is crown. Now the question is, is the crown monolithic? Is it one thing? Or is it divided into two? On the other hand, is kingdom monolithic, or is kingdom in a sense 
divided into two. Okay? It won't be really kingdom, because if we divide it into two, it's going to be foundation and kingdom. But still, where are we marking the separation? Where are we breaking it apart? So the whole point about that in the Torah scroll, the one and two are like the crown is divided into two, is that there was a whole debate for many generations between the Kabbalists. What is the crown? Is the crown the infinite? Is it the same thing? When I say the sphere of crown, do I mean that this already represents God's infinite nature? Or is it not? And there was a very big debate on it that was summarized in the end in the book uh, that summarized all the teachings before Rabbi Isaac Luria. The book's name is Pardes Rimonim. It was written by Rabbi Moses Cordovero. He was the greatest Kabbalist before the Arizo. And he has a whole section in the beginning, I believe it's section 4, or gate 4 he calls it, is the crown the infinite? And he brings all the different opinions. And he is of the opinion in the end that the crown is not the infinite, but he doesn't solve the question, okay, so if it's not the infinite, where is the infinite then? It took only in the next generation, uh, Rabbi Isaac Luria, he solved this question, and he said, really the crown divides into two. And this was not clear before. The crown divides into what we call Atik and Arich, the ancient of days and the elongated continents. And those two aspects, says the Arizal, the ancient of days is, he says, the end of the emanator, meaning it's the last part of the infinite. And the long countenance is the beginning of the emanated, the beginning of creation, that which came out of him. And that's already finite. So we have the end of the emanator in the top part, I am Havai, a God who took you out of the land of Egypt. But you shall have no gods over me. That's already within creation. And it makes sense. Because I am Havai, your God who took you out of the land of Egypt. What do you mean you took me out of the land of Egypt? You took me out of the straits, out of the confines of reality. And you lifted me up to a place that is above reality, a, a vantage point from which I can see the infinite. But you shall have no other gods upon me because I'm the only one in the, in the heavens above and the earth b- below and in the waters underneath and so on. All that is already talking within creation. And so we have this beautiful division of the crown into two. So again, in the Torah scroll, they show up as two separate things. Like the uh, Rabbi Isaac Luria explained, that in the end they're like two different things. Um, the end of the emanator, the beginning of the emanation, the end of the infinite, the beginning of the finite. About the infinite, I have to take you out of Egypt in order to bring you up to see that. About the reality, where you dwell in the confines of reality, here you shall take care not to have any gods over me. There's another small point that I want to bring up, and with this we'll end, that you have to ask, if this is true about above, what about below? Let's say it like this, that when the two parts of the crown are separated, we call that tam elion. We call that the higher cantillation, the way it's sung. The way it's uh, sung is that there's a separation there. When we, the way it's written in the books, in, in our printed books, is called the tam tachton. It's called the lower cantillation. The word tam also means taste. It also means um, having a sense of something. When a person is looking for supernal taste, so there he has to have these two aspects of the crown. When I'm looking for something spiritual, in the spiritual realm, I have to have these two aspects of the crown, that God is beyond everything, and at the same time, He's also the beginning of everything that there is. Those were the two aspects of the crown. When I talk about having taste in this world, inside our world, in the kingdom, and we said that the kingdom also here, as it were, separates into two. So we have, do not covet your uh, fellow's house, and do not covet his wife. When a person has taste in this world, when he understands 
the goodness of this world, his home and his wife become the same thing. And this is a famous thing from the Talmud that Rabbi Yochanan used to say, Rabbi Yochanan, one of the, the, the author, one, one might say, of, of, most of, the, of the most of the Jerusalem Talmud, he used to say, Me'olam lo karati li'ishti, ishti, ela li'ishti beiti. I never called my wife my wife, I always called my wife my home. That's what he called her, my home. That's that. When a person has those two things coming together, his home and his wife, the, uh, here it's do not covet, again, but the idea is that it's talking about his home and his wife. When the two things merge into one commandment, that is having taste in this world. To have taste above is to, to feel that what God is the emanator and what God is extended into the world is the same thing. To have taste below is to feel that my home and my wife are both the same thing. So with this, I leave you for this uh, uh, week and hope that uh, next week we get to do the entire Parsha and also that Wonders comes out and so on. And I see that there are a little bit of a confused face here and uh, maybe there's questions, but unfortunately, because it's almost Shabbos, I have to end. So God willing, uh, maybe uh, maybe in the, in the WhatsApp you can ask and I'll try to answer. All the best. Shabbat Shalom.